How you doing? This is my Roland TD50X drum kit. I've been playing on tour and I friggin' love it. I've been playing the Roland TD50X now since 2060 in the Strange Little Birds tour. And uh, I have to say, I completely embraced it as the band did. If you remember my kit that I used to play, it was a drum workshop kit and I had plexiglass around it to keep the cymbals basically out of Shirley's mic because she sings very dynamically and she moves around the stage a lot. And uh, I think the drums are starting to drive her crazy. So when I got the option to check out a TD50X, I just jumped at the chance and uh, I have not looked back because I love playing it live. It took some getting used to. Um, particularly the hi-hat, which I complained about early on, and then Roland fixed it, so there's a new hat now. I think it's the BH14G, and if you don't have that hi-hat in your TD50X player, you want to get it, because it's way way more dynamic, and it just feels better. The thing that I love about playing the Roland is I incorporate a lot of my own samples. Uh, Garbage has always been a really techie band. I've always been a really techie nerd in the studio, and. On the garbage records, we record live drums. There's uh, usually loops and samples. There's uh, electronic programming. There's a lot of percussive sound design. And uh, early on in garbage, we found it very difficult to try and capture the sound of the studio to the stage. It was kind of an evolution that took uh, years, actually, to sort of get close to where we are now. I started off playing the drum workshop, triggering uh, a D drum two, I think, which worked pretty good at the time, but it was 8-bit and mono, and uh, you couldn't really do very long samples in it, but at the time it worked. And we would blend that with uh, the drum workshop kit. But as you can see now, it's full electronic. But the cool thing is, I love the sounds that come in the stock DD50X kit. And I have probably 150 samples from garbage records in my own personal collection that are in there, mostly kick and snares, but it sounds great. And uh, I think, we sound probably closer to garbage albums now than we ever have before. And I think a lot of it has to do with the sound of the TD50X. Well, these are these are the new Roland V drums, the actual acoustic shells, and they sound great because they feel like a real drum, especially the kick drum, because it resonates when you hit it. Um, so I usually like the standard kit. I play kick, snare, rack, and floor, and then I have three auxiliary pads and the pad all the way to my left is the alternate snare and I use alternate snares on a lot of songs usually in intros or breakdowns uh, just to give it a scene change we like a lot of scene changes in garbage and then pads two and three are usually sound effects sometimes distorted fills uh, sometimes like in the trick is to keep reading I have a long like 30 second sample of like these French people speaking and we took from radio broadcasts that's actually on the record. Um, so when I dial up a song, uh, the, it changes the preset. So when it loads in whatever song, Paranoid or Queer, or Va, whatever, all of the sounds load into these pads. So it changes from song to song. I will say this, our front of house mixer, David Guame, asked me to minimize the kick drums because on the last tour, I think I had something like 20 different kick drums and every song had different low end. So on this tour, I think we've kind of stuck with like two basic rock kicks and then two sort of mellow kicks. So I mean, there's maybe four, maybe five kicks and they're all pretty close uh, dynamically and, and low end just so he doesn't go crazy from song to song having to adjust the, the low end. But every snare is different on, on the songs. And uh, I also have the latest update in the software and if you're a TD50X fan, I encourage you to get it because there's lots more kicks and snares and toms. In fact, there's lots more everything in there. Um, so there's a lot more variety for you to build a kit from. And uh, as I said, that's usually where I start. Building a kit is from the Roland sounds and I start to blend in my own samples. It takes a while to get the balances right. We spent three weeks in pre-production with the band and Dave, our front of house guy, and he actually sits in a different room and he can hear the speakers. And he'll take notes and go, the kick is too loud, too soft. But what I try to do in the mixer is, is make the kick drum the bar where I want to start from. So I set that at zero on the output. And usually the snare, if you look, 
and my mixer is maybe minus three or minus four. They had to somewhere in that range. The toms go up or down depending on how loud I want them. Um, but it's got a great mixer in here. So if after a shower during sound check, Dave tells me something's not right, I can very quickly go in and change the balance so it works for him. So he doesn't always have to balance it out in front of the house. I don't use the rims too often. There's a couple songs where I do some side stick and I'll do some accents on the snare fills where I hit back in the rim. But for the most part, I'm a meat and potatoes, hit the snare dead center. That's kind of my, that's kind of my modus operandi. The, the great thing about the TD50X is it's very programmable and you can sort of customize every kit. I do a lot of blending on the snares and I do a lot of velocity sensitive blends where some are equal. So if I hit the snare up and down, it's going to trigger the same other ones. I'll, I'll set it up so if I hit the snare at its loudest peak, it will trigger this gunshot sound. But when I play it quiet like grace notes, it, it doesn't trigger the sample. And the TD50X is great because it does allow you to really go in deep and blend those different layers and levels. So you can kind of customize every kit depending on the dynamics that you play for that particular song. If you want to try out the TD50X, it's very imperative that you get yourself a really good monitor mix. Because if you're used to playing acoustic drums, of course you hear the resonance, the cymbals, you hear the space you're in. And when you go to a TD50X, you're hearing the clicks of the pads. And the the drum pads feel great. The cymbals have a little odd click to them, but when you put a great headphone mix in or run a wedge uh, and crank it up, you're going to hit hear this great dynamic. So we have great monitor engineers, and it's imperative that you get a killer mix and that the whole band hears a mix because you got to remember that the band is used to walking around. The bass player is coming up here and putting his foot on the by the kick drum, and you can feel the kit and that. It's not the same, so everybody has to get a really good headphone mix dialed in. And uh, once you get that, it's it's fantastic playing them. Well, when I started playing the TD50X, I loved it instantly. But I had a bit of a problem with the original hi-hat because I felt like it didn't track the same as a real hi-hat. And I keep time, like a lot of drummers on a hi-hat, doing eighth notes or quarter notes or sixteenth notes, triplets, whatever it is. And I felt like I had to adjust my playing to make the dynamics sound the same as a real hi-hat. So I bitched and complained a lot to Roland. And after about a year and a half, they designed a whole new hi-hat. It's the VH14D, and it's a thousand times better than the original one. So if you don't have it, get it. It is worth it, trust me. Especially if you play the hi-hat like I do a lot. I love the latest update that Roland did. There's some fantastic new sounds, and I hope they keep adding even more sounds, especially snares, toms, even more cymbals, uh, just so you have more choices to be expressive in your building of a kit. We use a lot of alt snares and garbage during intros and verses and breakdowns. Sometimes it's sound effects or loops, but primarily it's alternate snares. And uh, augs two and three, depending on what song I've got up, are weird samples, distorted sounds, sound effects, sometimes drum loops or actual drum fills that are set to the tempo of the song. Most of the songs that we play in our set are to a click or to drum loops. And so if I know what tempo I'm playing at, I can tune the fills and the, some of the sequence and drum loops and things to that particular tempo. So when I'm playing and trigger it, it plays in sync with the, with the backing tracks and whatever I play. This little box here triggers all the presets on this particular tour we're running to Simpty and we have a giant LED screen behind us that has all these trippy visuals so when I push this little jammy here that sets up push it so it presets my TD50X for push it so all the sounds and the pads are preset it also sets the keyboards and Duke and Steve's guitar and the bass any presets and it triggers the light effects out to the front of the house so I have a fair amount of responsibility. Yeah, I'd say. I have to make sure that I get the right <laughs> song dialed in and hit play. And um, uh, what's your like disaster plan? Like, uh, you know, your everything's going, and, and all of a sudden something goes out. I mean, what happens? Well, it happens. I I just got a kill button right here. It's just pause. So, um, okay. and if I have to restart a song, and occasionally that happens, I just scroll back to the song, go back to push it, and start it up again. So. Um, Okay. Luckily, we don't have too many train accidents, and let's hope we keep it that way. So that's the snare from Push It that we used on the album. 
and the toms. There's some big tom fills in the song, and those are a blend from the studio toms that I recorded in Madison, as well as the TD50 toms. And uh, there's a crazy, that's a crazy distorted drum fill that we also had on the record. So, Automatic Systematic Habit has this triplet intro that goes like this. And again, those are the sounds from the album that I just loaded into these pads. And uh, so I'm able to duplicate the intro by just playing the samples that we had on the record. It's pretty cool. The other night, we did not have the song Queer in the set list. In fact, we have not even performed it or practiced it on tour, but someone in the audience was holding up a sign for Queer. And Shirley just went into it a cappella, and uh, it took me a second, I quickly scrolled over it, and we have the clarinet sample from the record, which is. And. amazing thing is that Shirley started singing it, it turned out she sang it in the original key, which is in G. Because I started playing drums, it was just her vocal, and Daniel, our bass player, tentatively started playing and realized, oh, she's singing it in G, and then Duke and Steve sort of figured out the guitars. And, and uh, by the time we finished the song, we actually sounded like we kind of knew what we were doing. Anyway, it's cool that I just have it ready to go like that. This is for the song Milk. This is the drum fill that we used on the record. And in the chorus, there's this little sonar effect. And so again, those are on the aux pads and I play them during the song and it sounds pretty much exactly like it does on the record. I played to a drum loop on that particular song. And so the kit is minimal. It's almost all fault snare. The sonar sound, which are triggered in the chorus, and it's, it sounds cool. It sounds very much like the album. I usually run all these up full blast. Uh, if something gets too loud in a particular song, especially like when we played Queer the other night, the clarinet sample came out too hot, so I was able to just quickly pull it down. But I can quickly tweak like this, and if you just go into the mixer, I've also got anything I hit. You can see all the different the kick. As I said, I usually set to zero VU. Snare's minus two. The toms are pretty hot on that plus five. But it's pretty quick. I mean, I can get in there and dial stuff in really quick where I can just, if something's too hot, I can pull it down on the faders here. All my sounds are in here on a little SD card. I can pull it out and show you. Uh, it's very small, like that's the SD card. Um, and I think I have probably about 150 of my own custom samples in there. When I build a drum kit, I start with only the rolling sounds. I'll spend a lot of time getting the kicks and snares that I want into a particular song. Toms, get the cymbals dialed in. And I do compression, EQing, I'll set levels, uh, tune the drums, whatever, for that particular song. Then I start adding in my samples. And sometimes I'll rely more on the rolling sound sometimes i lean more on my own samples it depends on the on the track that we're doing but it's really easy to do and really flexible in this and quickly be able to do it too this is our bass rig here daniel's bass rig and these are just the outputs that go from the td50 as you can see the outputs come here and go into here and then let's go to the front of the house and to the monitor board and uh it's pretty compact you know to have everything in a brain right here doesn't take up a lot of space. There's no amps on stage. There's no backline really to speak of. It sounds great for us and also our front of house guy, Dave, loves it too because it gives him much more control in the mix out front. All right, well, I'm Butch Vig. I hope you enjoyed that short, hopefully interesting tour of my Roland TD50X. And uh, if you get a chance, I hope you get to come out and see Garbage on tour and hear what it sounds like out in the crowd.